mantras that go with specific organs. I'll try to work my way up the chakras, but I guess I'll probably combine that information too. Who knows what I'll do, but something like that. <laughs> so small bolster, big bolster. Yin is um, different than restorative. Restorative is like everything is totally uh, supported. Yin, you kind of go into a posture that's obviously on the easier side to hold for a long period of time and you hold it for a few minutes and you focus on specific things um yeah so and it gets into the fascia which is pretty neat actually you leave here feeling very uh open and your muscles and your joints will feel good and your mind will hopefully feel clear like you did a whole flow class but without doing this well. Yin means moon. So it's the lunar aspect of yoga. So we keep it on the calm, cooling side, the feminine side, and the yin side. Look how cool and can't really see it from there, but just the color is so pretty and orange. Look at Robin, you have the chakra right next to you on the wall. <laughs> you will be infused with Swadhisthana or the sacral chakra. All right, it's time. We might get a late arrival. Yesterday we had our little trail. We <laughs> oh, ramped in here Every yesterday. Day. I know everybody had the day off, so it was nice. I think there was like 18 of us. There was a lot of room back there. You know, it was very yeah. free flowing, and then it was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we could like outline like where. It doesn't always happen that way, you yeah. know. And then if people show up a little bit later, then it's, it's hard, hard to do. tell. And that class was capped at 15 and. So, and we had 18, so that's always interesting too. <laughs> so I don't really know how to plan for these things. I'm like, you know what? Everybody will figure it out and it's all right. Somebody if was like almost on top of the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily it was Angela. She's been coming forever. So she doesn't care where she ends up. <clears throat> all right, let's take a seat on our big bolster for our centering and our breath work. Just closing your eyes. Gently closing your eyes. We make our connection with our bodies and our breath. If anybody, just a quick side note, if you're interested in coming to the Ram Das gathering that's tomorrow night at 7 30 it's very it's getting very very full i have to check today some of those people are going to zoom in which is also available to everyone you can zoom you can show up and we'll have a little uh talk we'll play one of his talks we'll do some meditation yeah it's a brand a lot of it is a brand new community since it's linked in with ramdas.org so a lot of people in the area and the surrounding area that are familiar with his work to some degree uh, that have been familiar will be here. So that would be kind of neat. But anyway, if you had it on your mind to come, then just sign up soon because, like I said, it's getting full. Cool. So sitting up nice and tall as I find. 
our message for the second chakra. So the second chakra is at the navel, the sacral chakra, governing creativity associated with the color orange and physically the reproductive system. <clears throat> Uh, endocrine system. As you saw, it's beautiful orange and color. So you can imagine it's such an important energy spot in the body, the navel, just below the navel. It's talked about in the the uh, the chakra system, like the one that I talk about all the time. That's sort of a mixture of Eastern and Western information and then also eastern chakra system that navel point just below the navel is a, a very important point and interestingly enough it just happened to coincide with you know our where we connect with our mothers in the womb and you know that whole process of, of coming into this world and being able to express ourselves and understand in a healthy way, abundance and pleasure. The message here is find what fills your cup and pour it all over the canvas of life. This is the time to put your creative projects first. The very ones you've had on the shelf for months. This is also the time to work on shifting your relationship with money and see it as an energetic tool that can bring you great freedom. This is also the time to focus on pleasure, what makes you feel turned on. Learn more about Tantra and cultivate Shakti, the divine feminine energy within. Dance around your living room and luxuriously oil and massage your body. Treat yourself the way you would a lover, for your life's, you are your life's greatest love. As you check in with your body, feel free to roll your shoulders a few times and just kind of work out some of those superficial kinks and tight spots. to settle in a little more into your seat, aware of the meeting points of your body and the bolster, body and the mat, the connection of where your hands are landing on your body, whether your palms are up or down. Breathing in and out through the nose. Just following your breath as it moves in through your nostrils. Follow the flow and imagine it expanding out into your whole body. And on your exhale, maybe feeling as though you're releasing what no longer serves you. Think about through your breath, you're creating space in your body. <clears throat> Whenever I hear that, uh, kind of quote or whatever about filling your cup. I always want to say just empty your cup. A lot an empty cup. It's more fun to see what comes in. You know when we when we raise our vibration and our energy, we want to empty our cup and, and we leave it open for grace. Space is so healing instead of jumping to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing all the time. Allowing yourself to just be, settle your energy, to relax your body. 
that the spaciousness is really where, where miraculous things happen. That takes training, right? The mind, the ego is always saying, you have to be doing this. What's next? If you're not doing enough, you should be doing this. Tell us to relax and quiet down and just tell us to go take a nap. It will come back, I promise. In all beauty of life, out anything that you are working to release. That said to consider forgiving the same as releasing. And I love that connection. Slowing the breath down a little more, lengthen it out. Nice deep breaths with whatever form of breath work that you remember doing in here that you really feel connected with, you're always free to bring that in. And if you're just sticking with the regular, nice, slow, deep belly breath, that's perfect as well. Continue to follow our breath. Bring your hands together at heart center. Bow your head down slightly. Take this time to set an intention for your practice today, for your day. I usually encourage everyone to just pick one word. Don't complicate it. Place your hands over your heart center and imagine that you're planting that word as a seed in your heart. Where it will be nourished, grow, energy that you create this morning. Continue to support your day. And release your hands back to your lap or your knees. Finding your posture again, sit up nice and tall. Feel that little lift out of the hips. And then drop your chin down towards your chest. Let's inhale here. And on the exhale, rolling your head to your right shoulder, stacking ear over shoulder. Relax your shoulders here. Keep the heart reaching forward, shoulders back. Take a deep breath into the left side of your neck. Let your next inhale drop your chin back down toward your chest. And on the exhale, over to the left side. Breathing into the right side of your neck. Deep breath. Inhale, the chin drops down toward the chest. And some flow. Exhale to roll it to the right side. Inhale it back down. Exhale over to the left. 
And we'll take it back to center on the inhale. And now as we take it back over to the right side, you can take your right hand and just gently place it on your head over towards the side of your head. So we're not pulling on our head or putting that much weight, just a little tiny bit. And we can take our left arm down by our side and slowly begin to stretch the left arm out wide. So you're reaching through that shoulder, getting a little deeper stretch in the left side of the neck, the top of your chest, your deltoid, upper back. Deep breath here. And then move nice and slow on the release. Left arm comes down, followed by the right. We're going to drop the chin back down toward the chest. And then over to the left side. And sitting up tall, left hand comes on to the head. So again, we're not pulling, we're not putting a lot of pressure. Right arm comes out when you're ready. So we connect with that little extra depth of stretch. One more breath here. And moving slow to release. Right arm comes down, followed by the left, rolling the chin back down toward the chest. Put both hands to head here as we stretch our neck, the back of the neck. Sitting up tall, let the chin drop. Take a deep breath into the back of your neck. Releasing your hands, lifting your head back to center. Roll the shoulders a few times in each direction as you slowly lift and lower your head. And we'll come back to center, leaning into, maybe you can place your left hand on your bolster or the floor, and let's circle this right arm, rotate the shoulder clockwise to start, big circles. And you can let your head hang over to the left side, and just let this be comfortable. transition circling counterclockwise. Take it back to center and we'll move to the other side, planting into your right hand. So it's nice if you can place your hand on the bolster because then you can let the right shoulder pop up and really rest your head over to that side and we'll start clockwise. And opposite direction. Slowly releasing back to center. And let's come off of our bolsters, slide them off to the side, make sure they're still in reach because we'll need them again eventually. Let's extend our legs out in front here and shake them out. Roll the wrist and the ankles a few times in each direction. And then our legs come together, flex your feet, sit up tall, bend your knees if you need to. We can take our hands down by our hips and just see how it feels here to bend and straighten the knees a few times, kind of working our way into the hamstrings and the calves, and even the soles of your feet. This is very helpful with knee health when you work the back side of your legs this way, and you open from the heels all the way up to the glutes. Good. And we'll come back to our feet flexed, and if you need to keep your knees bent, that's okay. Let's inhale and reach the arms out and up. Let your palms touch at the top. And we'll exhale and dive over the legs, just an easy fold this time around. Head drops down last. 
And we're holding here. And as usual, we're going to find some movement so we can create a little more space in the body. So maybe some rocking, a little bit of lifting and lowering. You might turn your head slowly from side to side. Giving your muscles some time to respond to the fold. Take one more breath here. And on your next inhale, roll it up. Let's reach the arms out and up. And exhale, hands through heart center, releasing your arms down by your sides. And we're going to draw the soles of the feet together for our first longer hold into cobbler's pose. So if you hold here and it's uncomfortable and you need a couple of blocks to slide under your knees, then feel free to, if you don't have your blocks, let me know. <clears throat> so set yourself up in a spot where you're going to be able to hold in the most full version, full expression version of this posture. So Normally our hands are either on our shins, wrapped around the feet if that's available to you. We're sitting up as tall as we can, drawing the shoulders back, heart forward. And our chin is dropped just slightly. So we feel that nice reach out through the top of the head. And we can close our eyes here and take our internal gaze up toward the center of the forehead. And connect with the breath. Connecting with that slow, deep breathing that we did in the beginning of class. And keeping your awareness in your body so you can feel the little shifts, right? Like you can you scan your body, you're going to notice that, all right, I can release a little bit here. And I can let go a little bit there. Maybe I can find my posture a little more. So you start to become aware of the subtleties of the posture, what your body can do. So these yin folds really allow your muscles to respond to the postures, which is a neat place to be when you get into that deep fascia, which is kind of what happens when you get a massage, a little deeper, you get a deep tissue massage, it's definitely getting into the fascia. And then there's fascial release massages that work super slow. They can be slow and deep and they go to those deeper levels of the muscle. So it's like physically and emotionally there, you begin to work. thought pattern, the affirmation that we can bring in here as well is I am supported by life. I am supported by life. It so opens rounds through the root chakra. Bring our awareness to our left hip joint. Take a deep breath there. With that thought pattern, I'm supported by life. And you feel the muscle release a little bit more. The right hip joint. Take a deep breath. Supported by life. Lengthening up a little bit more, finding that engagement so you're fully aware, supported by life. Inhale together. On your exhale, fold forward, coming into a fold. And if you feel like you need some support in the fold, to grab one of your bolsters to place under your arms if you want to take your arms out in front. 
rest your head on your hands and you don't fold all the way down. So just do what's right for you here. So you feel somewhat supported because we're still in this bound angle pose. Our knees are out wide. And we're gonna connect with our breath here. Again, slow and deep as we allow. So our awareness is within the body. And the neat thing here is that as you hold even longer, you're gonna, you'll start to feel your muscles like this unwinding sensation start to take place. And there's this little drop of liquid in each cell of your muscle, myofascia, <clears throat> that helps to really keep the muscle healthy and release, you know, there's like that link again with emotions here. So it helps to release things that you don't need to hold on to anymore. And the thought patterns, I trust the process of life. I trust the process of life. As you bring that in, you might feel yourself drop into the fold a little more. Just really trust your body and what is happening right now. I'll take three more deep breaths here. I trust the process of life. Feeling yourself drop in a little more with each exhale. When you're ready to move, make sure you move slow. And we'll slowly roll up. Inhale as we roll up. And let's take our hands back behind us and our knees together, planting the feet on the mat. So we can counter that posture a little by rocking the knees from side to side. We'll twist in the spine. Opening the sacrum back up. So when your legs are out wide like that, knees are out wide. We kind of draw the sacrum together the very low back, your head turning away from your knees. Stay with the breath. And we'll come back to center. And we'll keep with the root chakra and the sacral chakra for now. We're gonna come into our yoga squat. On front. Now we have these these big bolsters, right? So you are free to take it back behind you and have it as a support in your squat. If you don't want to squat the whole time, just freestanding. So do what is right for you, especially if your feet are not flat on the mat in your squat. It would be more challenging to hold for a long period of time. So again, just do what's right your hands and come together at heart center. Breathe. So this type of hold here, obviously is a little more active, even though it's passive because we're not doing anything yet. You'll make adjustments as your muscles begin to respond. So make sure you move your body around a little bit if you feel like you can make an adjustment. You might come out a little bit wider. You might adjust your arms. So we're relaxing our body as much as possible here in the hold. Starting from the soles of the feet. And so really relaxing. If you bring your awareness there and you think I'm relaxing my feet, it's amazing because your feet probably thought they were already relaxed but when you bring awareness there and focus on relaxing through the layers of tissue then you feel a little more softening happening and then you can draw that up to the ankles the calves And 
strengths. Find your strengths. Hips. Hip flexors. And spine. Right, keep on making those adjustments. And the affirmation, I am in perfect balance. I move forward in life with ease and with joy at every age. I am balanced and free. There's joy in every day. Breathing slow and deep, allowing your breath to open the muscles, the joints. aware of anywhere tension tries to build and letting it go with the breath. Take a few more breaths here. There's joy in every day. to release from here. Again, just move slow. It's like we kind of went into it and guided our body to relax. You want to honor that as you release out of it. And we're going to, let's start in table. We'll work through a couple rounds of cat-cow before we counter this with another hold. So come into table. And move slow as you inhale and drop your belly, lift your head. And exhale, round in your back. Inhale, flow through. And exhale, round. And just take a few rounds at your own pace. Come back to a neutral spine, walking your hands forward, walk your knees back, and go ahead and lower down onto your belly. And as you come onto your belly, bring your hands back so you can rest your forehead on your hands to start. And we'll take a moment here, take your feet out to the width of your mat. So our low back stays supported throughout this process. And go ahead and bend your legs up and rock them from side to side. So we can reset the spine, the low back. Take it back to center. And now setting up for our next supported cobra hold. So we're gonna take our small holster. Does everybody have a small holster? And you're gonna put it under your chest. You can either put it under your chest or under your solar plexus, right? So we're not lifted too, too high. We're gonna keep our head lifted. You can take your forearms out in front of the bolster. So we're in a supported cobra slash kind of a sphinx posture. Our feet stay out wide. Drop the chin a little bit. So we're lengthening the back of the neck. We don't have a wrinkle in the back of the neck. And we're connecting with our deep breathing here. Good. 
And if the back bending becomes too intense, slide your bolster forward and lower down a little bit as your body starts to respond to the hold. So you're always honoring your body, what it needs. So this one starts to move up through the sacral chakra and the, the solar plexus through the third chakra and even up to the heart. the affirmation or mantra that we can bring in here. My thinking is peaceful, calm, and centered. And if it feels like it's within your practice, we're keeping the shoulders away from the ears. So there's that slight engagement there. The heart draws forward a bit. My thinking is peaceful, calm, and centered. It's going to help to bring some balance to digestion. Really good for the health of your spine. And even just the words peaceful, calm, and centered. countering here from what we did in the previous hold in our squat. Now we're opening the hip flexors in a supported way. So our five more breaths here, enjoying that rising and falling of the belly you can feel the breath the belly pressing into the bolster or the mat and on your exhale for a couple breaths you might try to draw the navel back toward the spine a little more that will connect you with the, your deep core muscles so as Actus, which come down to the hip flexors as well. It's all connected in that area. And as we begin to think about transitioning out of this posture, this one's very important to move slow. We're going to bring ourselves back to a wide leg child's pose. So really take your time. You might press up to your hands and knees first, so it's easier to slide the bolster away. And then it's up to you. If you want to use a bolster in child's pose, the big or small one, then go for it. What you would do is just put it the long way between your legs and relax over it. But you are more than welcome to come into full expression of child's pose as well. So your big toes are touching, your knees are out wide if you're in your wide leg and you're relaxing either over your bolster or down to the mat and your arms are comfortable here this is our counter for that cobra slash sphinx hold and this moves us up to the heart chakra
connect with our deep breathing pretty easily here, especially if you're in your wide legs. Lots of room for your belly to move the breath. physical heart okay, that becomes more balanced here the circulatory system the respiratory system and the thoughts the affirmation that we can bring in here is my heart beats to the rhythm of love i bring joy back to the center of my heart The heart is all about joy. Another one is joy, joy, joy. I lovingly allow joy to flow through my mind and body and experience. So maybe even if you just remember the word joy as it relates to your heart health settling feeling right each exhale takes you a little deeper and you might be the only one that's aware of what's happening right that might not be obvious to me watching you in child's pose doesn't have to be huge adjustments but you'll feel the release the subtleties of the muscles responding and you giving yourself the opportunity to step into that place of healing and awareness and union with your body and your mind. I lovingly allow joy to flow through my mind and body and experience. When you're ready to move from here, Again, you're going to move nice and slow, and we're going to bring ourselves onto our backs, right? So however you can gently support and ease yourself onto your back, having your small bolster, actually keep them both nearby. I don't know, you might want the big one. So have your bolsters nearby as it's ready, so when you come onto your back, so we can do our counter child's pose and move up to balancing more of the digestive system, the throat chakra and the endocrine system again. So as you come onto your back, your feet are planted into the mat. Take a moment here to just have your arms down by your sides and take a few deep breaths and allow the muscles in your back to neutralize. And when you're ready to move into the posture, take your bolster, big or small. Obviously, the bigger one's going to be a little more intense. Uh, and slide it under your sacrum, your low back, for a supported bridge pose. And feel free to hold without support as well. <coughs> and if you're holding without support, feel free to let your knees splay out. We don't have to focus on our super alignment here. What we do, knees hold. It's just about keeping the hips elevated. Your face and your neck, chest are relaxed. And we're breathing into the belly. Mm -hmm. 
this posture is very supportive and productive uh, and emotional health. It really can help to diffuse some low key general anxiety, depression when you hold for longer periods of time, like up to five minutes, and you do it out on a regular basis, maybe a few times a week, you can support the rest of whatever your practices are around those things. So even the focus at the throat, right? Because it's so connected with the heart, the soul, the plexus. The thought pattern or affirmation here is I open my heart and sing the joys of love. And the reminder, it's okay to make noise. I have a voice for a reason. And as far as healing goes, we don't make enough noise when it comes to healing. I express myself freely and joyously. I speak up for myself with ease. I express my creativity. I'm willing to change. Stay connected with your deep belly breath. So you're redirecting any pressure out of your face. Open my heart, sing the joys of love. Oh, it's okay to make noise. I express myself freely and joyously. I speak up for myself. I express my creativity. I'm willing to change. Five more breaths here. And really just allow yourself to open to the posture. The flow of healing that it brings into your body and your mind. And the expression. Creativity. Joy. Willingness to change. bolster, slide it out, lie flat for a couple breaths, extend your legs out, and again, just let the back side, let your whole body reset, so you're just kind of inverted in there. supported or small or big bolster depending on how high you want your hips to be so it's a supported shoulder stand this is going to move us up toward our brain nourishing the brain to return the sixth and the seventh chakra so when you come into this posture then face the neck, stay relaxed. You're breathing into your belly, that nice, slow, deep breathing. Allowing your body to respond to the whole letting go of tension where it doesn't belong. Mm -hmm. 
Her brain health, the affirmation is I am the loving operator of my mind. In yoga, we talk about the ego, right? And getting out the ego and training the ego to become a servant versus our master. It's a very bad master, a much better servant, but it does take training right to override that inner critic or even like the i really should be doing that whether it's good or bad you know kind of train the ego to work in a more positive way and to take a back seat when needed so when we come into a space like this like my teacher always used to say there's a bucket at the door, leave your ego there when you come in because in yoga, namaste, they say that at the end of class and that means when I am in this place and me and you are in this place and you, there is only one of us, right? So we actually go back to the original notion that there is only one of us in the whole entire universe. I am a loving operator of my mind. Five more breaths here. One last affirmation. Letting go is easy. And when we do this, this book is used in the self love immersion course and uh so you might have noticed some of those affirmations you come with no resistance which is totally normal so with that one in particular letting go is easy you feel resistance around that it's okay you can love your resistance and also acknowledge that maybe that's true maybe letting go is ready to release out of this posture. Again, just take your time. We're going to move into our Shavasana. So set yourself up comfortably. Maybe use one of the bolsters under your knees. There's a couple other movements or postures that would assist your practice. Then feel free to move through those. I'll come around and do a little Reiki so you'll firmly touch your feet. If you don't want to be touched, just raise your hand now so I can know and respect your wishes.
Thank you. 
Fingers and toes. Ankles. Giving yourself a big stretch before rolling onto your right side, curling up there. supporting yourself up to seated position. Keep your eyes closed and the heart center. Back to your attention. Visualizing your eyes growing, growing, and for and again, bow our heads down toward our hearts to honor the wisdom within. a little deeper to honor the hearts and wisdom of many teachers and ancestors. So our practice together with the sound of OM a deep breath in. So, how did you like that practice? Yeah. Sometimes you think like I need it. Right. 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 Right
Yeah. <laughs> but now you'll be ready for all the other stuff. Yeah, right. It's, it's an amazing moment. It's just, I always feel that way when I'm making that.